Okay, so we've worked with some loops, we've done some audio editing, figured out how some of that works, and now we're going to move on to adding some MIDI to our project. So first of all, to differentiate the difference between audio loops and MIDI, if you look at our audio loops, you can see that they have a waveform here. I'm going to hit T a couple times and zoom in. Okay, they have an audio waveform. They've been performed somehow, and the audio has been captured as recorded information, as recorded digital audio, and is playing back in its form as digital audio. Okay, wh what MIDI is, it's called Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it's basically using a keyboard or some kind of MIDI controller to control samples, other pieces of audio, or different sounds and when they're playing. So when you play a note on a keyboard, you're not actually playing audio you're sending a signal that's saying I'm playing this note at this time for this long and this hard and that information is then received by the computer and that's where you can assign that information to say that should make, make the sound of a saxophone or the sound of a piano or the sound of a drum okay and so it's really flexible in that you can take these little bits of information this MIDI information and move it all over the place whereas we're limited with the audio as to what has already been performed like maybe there's a bunch of notes that were played together at this one point with MIDI all those notes are separated we can adjust them and we can change any information if one's a little later we can change that if, if it's the wrong note we can change it as well okay so let's go ahead and add an instrument track. Okay, now this is where it gets confusing. We'll go to track new, and you'll notice that there is a MIDI track, but we're going to want to do an instrument track. And the reason why is because a MIDI track is just going to let you record that MIDI information, but not give you a chance to make it into audio. Okay, and so inside of the computer, we can do that with an instrument track because we're, we're receiving that MIDI information, and we're also passing it along to a virtual instrument where we're going to take and convert that MIDI information to audio, trigger different sounds. Okay, And so that's the key to the name there, Instrument Track. So if we click on Instrument Track, we're going to make it stereo. Hit Create. And there we go, we have our Instrument Track. Now the, this really isn't going to do anything until we go on our inserts. And you'll see that I went up here and I, I added my inserts to my view I can go and click on one of these inserts go to multi-channel plugin down to instrument that same word again keeps popping up and here are my instrument options my virtual instrument options that come with Pro Tools boom which is a drum machine DB 33 is an organ mini grand is a piano vacuum is a synthesizer and expand is kind of an all-purpose module okay We'll be using a couple of these. We'll start out with Mini Grand. And there it pops up. It looks nice. You can see it's loading. That's what that red line is for. And now if I reach over to my keyboard, there is the piano playing. Now, my keyboard is not producing that piano sound. It is just producing that information saying, play this note, this hard, this long, and at this time. Okay. It is this plugin right here that's receiving the information to that's that's taking that information and saying we're gonna make it sound like a piano. Okay? And we can even with this plugin, we can change what type of piano we're playing, and we can also change the the reverb on it as well. Okay? So you'll notice I can exit out of that, but it's still there. See it says mini grand. Okay, and I can still play it. Okay, so the reason why I can play this is because this is my my only instrument track here. It's highlighted, and so the connection between that MIDI input and this track has already been made. Okay, if I hit that record enable button, then it makes it even more solid of a connection. So if I select a different track, I'm still going to be playing. My, when I play the keyboard, it's playing through that track. You'll notice as we get more instrument tracks that sometimes you'll be, sometimes you'll reach over the piano and and you'll hit the keys and 
it'll be the wrong one. So the way to really define which one you're going to be playing is to hit that record enable button. Okay, And the record enable, all it's saying is when I do record, this is the track I'm going to record on. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and double click on this and call it piano for right now. And and we'll take one quick little look about how this is configured on the mix window as well before we record. So if we hit Command equals, we'll see there, and there is our mini grand, the inserts there, and above that is an instrument port, the instrument portion of the track. Now this is where it's kind of the MIDI part of the track, and you'll see here's our inputs. So it's it's receiving all MIDI inputs, and it's taking this mini grand, it's taking the output of the MIDI and sending it to the MIDI grand, okay? So that's where that signal is going, and then after that this mini grand is taking that information and converting it to audio. And so then it passes down in the track as audio, and as it goes to our output, it's audio, and the, the rest of the track looks like a normal audio track or auxiliary track. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense. And if not, just remember that you want an instrument track, you want to put your plug-in on that track, and you want to record enable that track. Okay? So now we need to go ahead and record. So we'll bring up our transport. If we hit the space bar for play there, you can see that it's the same as hitting the play button. Okay? And we could get ready for what we want to play by auditioning. Okay, auditioning what we're doing. But once we're ready to go, we simply hit that record button. And as soon as we hit play, it's going to start recording. Okay. Okay, and then we hit play again to play back. Okay. So there we go, nice and easy. We can hit record and, and record everything. And you'll and you'll notice that it's very similar to the regions in audio. So we can take and move it around just like we did our audio regions, but there's a whole layer that that is a little deeper that we'll deal with with MIDI editing in just a minute. But I'm gonna hit delete and show you a couple other options you can do. You can do this this little guy which is called um, wait for note. So when I hit record, it's going to start my click track. And I'm going to reach over, and as soon as I hit a key on the piano, hit a note on the piano, it's going to start playing. So I could. Okay, so that way I can start recording as soon as it begins. Okay, so there we go. We've got something recorded. We were able to use Wait for Note. We can take that off as well if we want to. Okay, I'm going to click here and show you just a couple other things. There are key commands that will let you facilitate the starting the record. So instead of having to go record and play, you can do that all at once. Uh, one way is by holding Command and hitting the spacebar key on Mac or Control spacebar on PC. If you are on a Mac, you will have to go to the system preferences and turn off the command spacebar control that pulls up the spotlight. So that that'll pop up for you if you haven't turned that off. Okay. There's also another command, which is F12, and that has to be enabled um, in in Mac system preferences. There's another command that's for that. You got to turn that off. But one of the easiest ones, if you're not on a laptop is the three key over on the numeric keypad. Just hit three and you'll start recording. So I'm going to hit command spacebar. Okay, so there we go. We've got some things recorded. We got a couple different kinds of things recorded and we're going to work on editing editing those in just a minute.